I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master. Go to QuantrixAuthority.com to learn more. Hey, welcome back to another netcast. I'm Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority. Sincerely appreciate you joining me today for episode number 254, How to Use Item Groups in a Key List of, of a Select Function. This is a question I received at QuantrixAuthority at gmail.com, and I am more than happy to answer it. But before I get to it, I just want to shout out that uh, there's only 20 more days until the best time of the year. And the best time of the year, of course, is the Quantrix Dimensions Conference in Portland, Maine. Uh, we're 20 days out. I am totally stoked about the agenda. I just wanted to point out here on the agenda that I have two presentations at the Quantrix seminar. I'm going to be doing a use case of how we use uh, Quantrix to do product wheels at my day job. And then I'm going to show you how to use uh, timeline and some of the timeline functionality that I employ in a lot of my models and kind of give you best practices or uh, some tips on how to do that. So I'm totally excited about the Quantrix seminar and I hope to see many of my uh, followers. Actually, I hope to see all of my followers there. Do what must be done and make it to the Quantrix seminar because it is hashtag worth the price of admission. I, I'm just so excited for 20 days to come and I hope to see you there. But anyway, back uh, to the question at hand, how to use item groups in a key list of a select function. I was uh, provided this model and the question was, I have over here in this PL department matrix, they have a, uh, say, a, an account number here, and then they have departments going across the top in, a, in an item here. And what they want to pull in from this data DLG matrix is they want to pull in the cost for the correct month and the correct year where the department here is listed as a group and the account number here is also listed as a group so maybe not exactly the way that I would like to see this model structured but again uh, this was given to me and they needed some help so I'm more than happy to try to answer this question so we need to try to get at uh, just this level of the uh, category cost this first level and this second level of category cost and then we need to try to get at this NC category, we need to try to get at the one, two, three, that looks like the fourth level of it. And how do you do that in Quantrix? Uh, you use the at level function. So what we're going to do is, I want to create a helper matrix here that will maybe uh, view this just a little bit differently. I want to take cost over to it, okay? And within cost, I am going to put in C1, I'm going to say that this equals at level, uh, at level, I think I need to move myself here, let's move myself I guess over to here. What's my at level? Well, my at level of category, and what's my start level? It's going to be level 1, and then I want to end at level 2, and you can see that it gives me a 30.4000 like I'm seeing here. So maybe I would rename this uh, matrix to be something called, I don't know, the F6 to open up the thing. I'm going to call this rename, call this the data DLG helper. How about that matrix? So once I have this uh, set out right here, what I can do is I can reference this guy, and because the category is linked, it is just like it, this C1 value is an extension of any of the items over here in the data DLG matrix. And maybe I'll rename this uh, uh, department, department account, account, you can see her there. And be, again, because they're linked, they're an extension. So then what I would do here is I would simply say, that this matrix is equal to uh, select. What do I want to select? And I'm going to probably put a sum select in here. I want to select uh, the values over here in data GL, data DL G table. And what is my key list? Well, my key list is going to be my department and account number. And then what is my lookup value? Well, I want to look up the department I'm on, so at department, okay? And then I'm going to hit an ampersand dot ampersand, 
and I'm going to say, well, I also want to look up my account number. And how I do this is, again, I would go at level here. And again, this is four levels in of this category. One, two, three, four levels. So I can see it is level four. So what I've done is I've created kind of this concatenated lookup key. And if I go ahead and I hit enter here, after one more parenthesis, I don't need the at in there. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to move this formula actually all the way down so he's not ecl being eclipsed, okay? So if I do that and then I hit enter a couple more times, it brings it up to the top so we can see it. Then I would say, okay, if I'm in uh, department 30 and my account number is 4100, what do I expect to see in January? Uh, I would expect to see 250. So again, if I go over here to Department 30, account number 4100, indeed I see 250, just like I'm seeing here. If it's 4102, I would expect to see 1700. So that is how you would go ahead and isolate the different levels of a category or group of items, if you will, uh, using uh, an at level function. And I've even done it with this matrix over here that kind of creates this helper lookup column. If you have any questions about how to use Quantrix, I do hope that you will reach out to me at uh, quantrixauthority at gmail.com. I absolutely love Quantrix. I want to make you a Quantrix master. So please join me again for another episode of Quantrix Authority with Rich Lopez. Today's podcast is brought to you by quantrixauthority.com. I love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master.